What is up, friends? Rob here, the Medicare Minister, and I'm back with a brand new Spitting Fire video podcast interview for you today. And I have Miss Galen Hendricks with me. Miss Galen, will you say hey real quickly? Hey, how's everybody doing this morning? All right. I know she's going to spit some serious fire today, and she's going to share with us on what it takes to be successful and some leadership principles and some mindset that I know will put fresh wind in your sales. But before we dive into that, I want to encourage you as always to please like, comment, and most definitely subscribe below because I want you to be alerted every time we drop our weekly content, our Monday motivations, as well as our uh, spitting fire interviews. So Miss Galen, once again, thank you for coming on today. I'm so appreciative. I know you're a busy person and thank you for being generous with your time today. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it so much. You know, I have a lot of respect for you too. I love anytime anybody can talk about the ministry and Medicare together. That's right. pretty awesome. exciting. So I've known you now for a couple of years. I met you through Justin Brock, who's our owner and CEO here in the Medicare Gurus. And right. one of the things that really drew me to you and that I've just really grown to love is your passion. Definitely want to talk about the faith element down the road here in just a few minutes. But I love the passion and the energy. So real quickly, we, we just give us a little bit of your story, uh, where you came from, how you got into this industry and where you're at now. Well, so where I'm at now, wow, that's that's a pretty uh, big one in the last couple of weeks, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, I grew up here in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, my dad was a debit insurance agent. Uh, a lot of people watching this probably heard it, getting tired of it a little bit, but he was a debit agent and he worked his tail off. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anybody work as hard as he did still to this day. I mean, I remember being a little kid and him having three jobs, you know, and just making sure he took really good care of us. Um, I think his smile that I saw every single day instilled in me that you can have fun at work. And one of the things that I think is really important is you know, when you go out and get that first job and, and I'm going somewhere with this, so hang with sure, me, but yeah. when you go out and get that first job, you literally are terrified, just terrified. Well, my dad instilled in me that, you know, you don't go in there terrified. You go in there that they're the best, you're the best thing they're going to get. Mm, that's good. And so I started uh, working when I was 15 years old. And I think that that is what instilled in me um, that I loved working. Now I started in a burger place y'all. And, uh, what was great about that is it was called Lloyd's of Lubbock. And I got to really interact with people. The guy I worked for at the time, he had all of his buddies, his softball team, etc. always hanging out in the restaurant. So it was really like a big family. So that's kind of what was put in my head in the very, very beginning that you can have family at work. You can have fun at work. You can do a lot of things that is other than digging ditches or, you know, manual labor. And some days when I pass by people and see that, what they're doing to support their family, you know, that's what instills blessings in me. Not that what they're doing is any less important. And I would never say that. And matter of fact, I think it's more important because they're having to do something that their heart's probably not totally in. So when uh, I graduated high school, I wanted to go to college like everybody else. I wanted to be a lawyer, which, you know, anybody that's been in any kind of conversation with me will tell you that I'm a pretty good debater. I was captain of my debate team and I loved talking with people and, you know, not necessarily fighting with people, but discussing with people. And so then I went into um, interview for this job at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. And my uh, boss that I worked with for like three years, a lot of you guys have heard me say, I learned early on, you never use the word can't. Right. And, you know, when Cody uh, came to me uh, the year before last and said, here's our mission statement. You uh, can't fail if you don't quit. And I said, Cody, I don't know if I can use that word can't over and over and over because that was instilled in me early on. But what I found out at that job is that I really loved people mm. and I loved 
uh, that they loved me. And I think that that was a very good early on lesson. I'm a people pleaser at heart. You know, um, you probably deal with this too, Rob, in your life, but especially being in the ministry. But, you know, the first time there's a little bit of conflict, you know, I get this anxiety and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? And, you know, how does that person not like me today? And so that went on a lot in my first job. And then when I finally walked into this insurance agency that I thought was pharmaceutical sales, my life changed. And I started watching people uh, that were insurance agents that my dad had told me about for a while that, you know, were in what they called the ordinary business and that they were on straight commission. And he, my mom kept my dad from going into that world because she wanted stability and she wanted, you know, to know what their paycheck was going to be every week. And I think, you know, how you hear a lot of uh, stories about how dads lived there. Um, lives of baseball and football and basketball through their sons. I think my dad wanted to live that life through me. And so that's where I started. And I just really watched and learned and always tried to be around successful people. We had kids my age, uh, you know, making $2,000 a week at that time. And there were no advances. The only way you got an advance from an insurance company is if you wrote a 12 month premium. And when you sent the 12 month premium into the company, you got 12 months of commission. And so I really learned early on that those guys had a lot of highs and lows. Uh, You know, when they were on, they were on. And when they weren't, they weren't. And I knew I didn't want to be that person. Right. You know, so that kind of made me nervous in the beginning. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I mean, straight commission at that time, I kind of went back to my mother's way of thinking. I was like, oh, I don't know. But I'll tell you the funny story of where it all got started. And I haven't told this one in a while, uh, Mr. Rob, because, um, you know, I talk to a lot of people, so I always don't want to repeat a story. But three years into uh, working with this insurance agency, all these great agents had won a trip to Hawaii. And the girl working with me at the time, uh, all these leads started coming in and there were stacks and stacks of leads. And we were given the week off to do whatever we wanted. Our boss had paid us. And I looked at her and I said, how cool would it be if we ran some of those leads and they came back and we wrote all this insurance? And she goes, well, how are we going to do that? I go, well, I set appointments all the time. I can set our own appointments. We'll go run them. And when we come back, when they come back, we'll have had all this business written. Well, she and I did that. And we ended up routing close to 20,000 of annualized premium in that week. And uh, what was hilarious is we put our name as um, Hendrix Black. Mm. And uh, because her last name was Black, my last name was Hendrix. And when our boss was coming back, I looked at her and I go, oh my gosh, she's going to be mad at us. And long story short, for like three weeks, he was trying to find out who this agent was that was Hendrix Black. (laughs) And, you know, we finally had to tell him. And, you know, he wasn't happy because you know why? He knew we got a taste of what it was like to be successful. And all these men, sorry guys, but all these men and these agents had been telling us for a long time, we couldn't do it. It was hard. And we did it and we did it big. And so we had the bug. And so after you've gotten a taste of that, it's, it's always here, right? It's always, I can do that. And so things started progressing and I worked with that guy until 1990. And he, after he found out what we did, he started believing in me and he started really pushing me to be more involved in sales and in the call center and, And he didn't pay me well, guys, I'm going to tell you, I was making at the time 26,000 a year. And I remember when he bumped me to 30, he thought that I was just, he was just getting robbed, you know, no, no pun intended robbed, but he thought he was getting robbed. And so my husband at the time had worked with the agency and he really wanted to go out on his own. You know, all of us struggle with that. You know, when do I leave? What do I do? Right. And, you know, when you employ uh, LOL 
LOA agents, LOL, it's fun too, y'all, but <laughs> LOA agents and um, one leaves. It's, it's like, I, I told Cody this last year on interview. It's like, you've got a kid going off to college. Sure. You have all these mixed emotions. You, sure. You've done all you can to make this person successful. And now they're going out into the world. And it's like any teenage kid, they forget mom and dad. They forget right. what mom and dad did. Right. And so you're sitting back here and you've got all these hurt feelings. So I didn't want to do that to him because I watched when an agent would leave, he would just be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I finally did leave, um, my heart was hurting for him because I would watch him after an agent would leave. Mm -hmm. I would watch him go through the emotions of, how could I've kept that person? How could I've done better? You know, and, right. and I've been through those same emotions. So when you fast forward, uh, I ended up working with a guy that owned a big insurance company here in the Dallas Fort Worth area by the name of Western Casualty and Western Fidelity. And I learned so much working with uh, Richard. I, like I learned all the things, what to do, what not to do. I got to be, like I said, from the stage at 8% Nation, I, it was kind of like the rooster guarding the hen house. You know, right. I got to be in ops. I got to be in sales. I got, I got to do things that were incredible. Like when he got into the annuity business, I didn't even know what an annuity was. <laughs> and we were hiring all these guys and right. he said, okay, well, they're going to rock it. And what ended up happening about three months later, I was kicking their tails and he ended up getting rid of all those agents. And I had to go to all these offices. You talk about stress overload. So I've just done a lot of everything. I've done plan design. I've done recruiting. I've done marketing. And it really set me for the stage. Um, I've had really good mentors. And when I left there in 2003 and started senior security benefits in the storefront, well, then that's when... Um, I brought God into our business. Um, I said, I wanted to have the golden rule all the time and just have fun. And, you know, we have stresses just like everybody else, but you know, Rob, it's been the absolute joy of my life. It's, uh, it's crazy. Awesome. When you get to see these agents that weren't making anything, right. you know, struggling, I mean, their moms and dads had told them all you're ever going to be worth is you know, the job at Burger King or the job at McDonald's and you put them in a, in a position and they start rocking it out. It's, it's just so incredibly warming. So that's, I mean, you know, when you've been in this 36 years, guys, it takes a little while to tell the story, but that's sure. about as reader's digest version as I could make it for you sure. this morning. Love a lot of the things you said there. I want to kind of go back and dive into some of those. Sure. One of the things that I really love about you is I'm a passionate person. So I love to be around passionate, exciting people. I love to have fun too. That's another thing I love about you. So this journey that you went through for those that are watching, why do so many people struggle to find their passion? And really, how did you know when this was really going to be your passion, this insurance thing? You know, that, that is such a great question. Um, you know, I, I, I thought about that a lot over this last, you know, two or three weeks. Uh, I've been through an emotional roller coaster with the integrity thing. Um, it's exciting, right? But it's also, um, it's kind of, it's not sad. I don't know what the right word is, but it's kind of like you're stepping away right. from what you know, what you love, what you do. And the great thing about integrity is, you know, they, they said you get to do all that on steroids. Yeah. But you still have this emotion running through you because what I finally have figured out over about the last five years is that while I have an incredible passion for people, mm -hmm. I think that's what my purpose is. Um, you know, it's one thing to have a passion, but I think it's even more important to know what your purpose is. Yes. And I think my purpose, we're, when we're born, we're all born with a purpose. I read this in a book not too long ago. It's just that sometimes we struggle to get there. We struggle to know what it is. We, we have to raise our kids. We have to make money. And sometimes we do jobs we don't really want to do right. just to put food on the table. And I think what I finally figured out for me, and it happened back in uh, 1990, my dad died. And it was a, a very, very hard time for my family. It was a hard time for me. But my dad put this burden on me the day he died. And he said, you know, 
you're in charge. You're the leader. You've got to take care of your mom. And I just, I can go in peace if I know that. And I was very bitter uh, and I was mad at God. And what happened was, is I got brought to my knees and that's when I discovered what my purpose was. My purpose was to live my life, to enjoy every day at the absolute fullest. And I want to stop there a minute because a lot of times when I say that, and I got hit with this a lot at 8% Nation, people were like, you know, when, when I hear you speak, it's like, you've never had a bad thing happen to you. Sure. You know, you are always excited. You're always happy. You're always fulfilled. And you know, I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm human. You know, I can have fights with my husband. I can have fights with my family. You know, I can have arguments with coworkers. Um, I can have people second guessing me. But the thing I never lose sight of, and it's because I was, and Rob, you know this, because I've told you this before. I was brought to my knees. And when I was brought to my knees, I had to look up. And so At that very moment in my life, I realized that there was nothing that was going to happen in my life that I couldn't get through. I had just gone through a year and a half of being broke, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when boss number two terminated us because my husband wanted to go do his deal. You know, I knew what it was like to go take money out of a piggy bank and buy pizza. Mm. so I think the passion that everybody sees in me is really more one of being just blessed Mm. um I know what hard times are and I can promise you people have had harder times than me um but I can promise you I've had harder times than others and I think those hard times are what creates my purpose Mm. and that purpose is what fuels my passion yeah. You know, I, I always want to have that soft spot for people. You know, everybody's learning. Like the day we were in y'all's office and Justin had done this big buildup of Galen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that makes me nervous, by the way, y'all, sure. because I always feel like I have to live up to that. Sure. But I have such a big passion that it doesn't come across I'm nervous. Because when I tell people that, and I tell people that all the time, I'm very transparent. They'll say, I never even saw that. You just came in and, you know, like a wrecking ball, not to quote Molly Cyrus, but you know, that's what I, that's what I do. And, and I, I love seeing smiles on y'all's faces because it's like, I can do that. You know, that's not that hard. I can do that. And I remember like a couple of weeks after I left you, you were like on fire. You, you went out and you wrote cancer and it was exciting. And so, you know, I think that's the best answer uh, for that, because it's just, it's crazy, awesome feeling when you've got that. Sure. And I totally agree with you. I mean, you just took us to Galen church there, you know, I was looking for the choir and you know everything getting saved and all these other things, but you know, what I really love is, and what I've tried to teach in ministry for the 20 years is I truly believe God does his best work in us in the hard seasons. Oh, in the absolutely. Seasons, it makes us more dependent on him. It makes us realize how blessed we really are. And mm-hmm. just to go back to the last thing you said, you know, uh, I developed this thing called fill in the gaps with Medicare. And part of that is mm-hmm. cancer. And, and it's because of you teaching me and pouring into my life that I was able to ultimately down the road to sign that and help other agents now be the, uh, you know, we're never going to probably be the queens or kings of bundle, but we're the juniors at least. But, you know, that's why we're able to do 80 to 100 apps a week in our office because of people mm-hmm. like you pouring into our lives. So you know, big thank you for that. So I got to ask though, because, you know, when we see you on stage, when I'm around you, you're always so kind, so nice. And and I agree. Most people think that we're just like that all the time. I just make a choice to be like that more and not let the bad stuff, uh, you know, get in the way. But where did that infectious energy come from? Is that something that was passed down from your parents? Is that just something one day you just realized, Hey, I I got something here and I want to hone into that. Or is it a combination of things? You know, I think I've always been a happy person, but I was born a leader. Um, I've always had this ultimate burden that I need to take care of people. 
Yeah. And, and it wasn't that my parents put that on me. Uh, you know, when you're angry and the enemy's attacking or you're having a pity party day, you know, you've always go, well, my parents did this and my husband did that. And my kid did this. But the truth of the matter is it's all self-inflicted. Mm. <laughs> you, know, um, you either become a victim of your surroundings or you become the leader of your surroundings. That's good. And I try to be the leader of my surroundings. Um, you know, there's this saying that we see on Facebook every single day. You know, you can't control the way people treat you, but you can control the way you act to the treatment. Sure. And I think what happened to me early on is I just, I prefer smiling and being happy over being negative. You know, every, you know I haven't shared this a lot, but I'll share it on this one, because I think it's very important because of your ministry. But, you know, I was very depressed at uh, 18 years of age. Uh, I had hit a wall and um, I felt like I really wasn't, you know, going to be what I thought I wanted to be. You know, I joke about being Miss America from the stage and, and that was, I'm not lying, that, that was my first occupational dream. And then the second one was I wanted to be attorney because I thought that that was something you know, important that would have a, you know, a stigma to it that people would see that, oh man, Galen really made it. She really hit it on top. And I think that when you have good parenting, um, you know, I didn't even know I was poor till I was a junior in high school, but, you know, I never felt poor. And I see people who have tons of money in the bank and they're poor. Mm. They're poor. And, you know, and that's one of the things that I've really tried to always think about is I never want to forget where I came from. You know, my goal in life, and a lot of people think this is, um, I'll just, you know, I always say God knows me because he lives on the inside. So he knows I curse. But, right. you know, a lot of people <laughs> think that kindness thing that you and I have is yeah. um, BS. Yeah. That, you know, it's fake and it's not real and nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah. And matter of fact, um, it's so much easier for me to be kind. You know, I don't stand up for myself very well. Uh, I can stand up for others like nobody's business. Sure. And, um, you know, when Queen of the Bundle came about, it's interesting you said that while ago that not all of us can be kings and queens. You know, you know that. You, you said that, but you know what God says. God says we are all that. And yeah. um, so I try to, when I'm having one of those bad days, I, I try to see myself the way God does. So when I was, when I went through that depression, I knew I never wanted to go there again. And I will tell you, I had so much that I could have been depressed over from that time at 18, which by the way, was 40 years ago next week. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I turned 18, my 18th birthday was, um, very hard for me. Sure. Um, I, I hit a wall, but the boss I had at the time, she said, you know, Galen, she goes, you talk all the time. Yeah. I've had that my whole life. Um, you talk all the time, but you're not, you're not really saying how you feel and you need to go to someone and you really need to talk out how you're feeling. And so I said, well, what does that mean? And she goes, I want you to go talk to a counselor. And I said, like a doctor, a psychiatrist. She goes, no, 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 no. You need to go to somebody you can talk to. And at the time I was broke, my parents were broke and I didn't want to put that burden on them. And she encouraged me to go to the United Way because they would uh, set up a payment plan or maybe not pay at all. And so I was in counseling for like two years and I got all that, what they call in counseling, vomit out of my system, sure. poison out of my system. And I became on fire mm. and it was like a, a light switch. And then you get to 2020 and I found out that I can do without food. I can do without alcohol. What I can't do without is that people interaction. Oh, wow. 8% nation for me was massive. Uh, Medicare con was massive for me. It was spiritual healing, but I went through a depression last year and I could feel myself spiraling out of control. And I was just trying to deal with it myself. But in February of 2021, it got bad. Mm -hmm. And I just literally threw myself back into counseling. And, you know, 
it was a quicker heal. Mm -hmm. It was easier. Uh, I have a spiritual counselor that's part of my church. And I always encourage young people that if you're in that place and you're in church, they provide counseling at no charge. Mm -hmm. And I give a love offering to our count, to our pastor, my counselor, but, um, and, and I'm not in counseling right now. Um, I go like once every two months now for a refresher, but when you are a type A personality, guys, you're always on. And Rob, you're a type A personality too. Yep. And when you have those moments of darkness or those moments of pain, you can talk to a room full of people. That's why your pastors are on fire mm -hmm. because they can they want to they want to help others, but they don't always help themselves. Mm. I love what Craig Rochelle says in his book, Winning the War with the Mind. Uh, his 17 year old daughter would always give him trouble right before he took the stage. And he said, I would have to go out there and just be this personality. And in my mind, I'm like, I need somebody to build me up sure. because I'm flat right now. And I think what y'all need to do is watch those type A people in your life. You're probably one of them. You're so busy trying to lift others up. You forget to feed yourself. So I have a lot of stuff on my desk. So to answer Rob's original question is I keep myself fulfilled. Like the thing I read this morning is peace begins with a smile. Right. So even though I may have had a, you know, a rocky day yesterday, or you may have had a rocky day yesterday, today's the new day. Yeah. You get to do it all over again. And yesterday's over that that's one of the things we've got to remember is yesterday is over. Yeah, and I think that's why I forgive so easily. I mean, I have, I've had a lot of people interview me and go, well, how did you forgive that lawsuit? How did you forgive how those people treated you? Mm -hmm. How do you forgive this person that called me yesterday, Galen, and tried to bad mouth me to you when I said, and Medicare Bob was telling me this story and he said, uh, I'm not listening to you. I know Galen, bye. Yeah. And that's how you yeah. have so many people that you've hopefully poured into that love you just as much as you love them so that when you're having one of those days, they're lifting you up yeah. and sales people live on an island. You guys are lucky in your office, Rob, because y'all, y'all all root for each other. You know, I was talking to Justin Monday about Medicare con 2022 and I asked him a question, you know, what do you think is the secret of the success of your office? And I know what agents always think, oh, they got people walking in and they got this and they got that. They got the love fest going on. It's not that. That that doesn't make or create happiness. What makes and create happiness is the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I have been behind the agency at uh, Bobby Brock Insurance and y'all have hard times too. Y'all have days when y'all don't like each other, but the 90% of the time y'all are rooting for each other and you want everybody to do well. And, you know, and the fact that you guys, you walk in a room at 8% nation and you see y'all hanging out and y'all see y'all wanting to have lunch together and see you having fun together. For those of you watching today, that's real. You know, I've been to dinner with these guys. I've been out having a cocktail or two with some of these guys. And, you know, one of the guys that works with you, Rob used to be their minister, their minister. He's married and um, his name escapes me right now, but I love that kid. Like he walked up to me and he was just like, you know, Miss Galen, you just fill me up, man. You were on fire. And I was like, you know, what's hilarious is y'all fill me up. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I walk into a room and I may have just had the worst call of my life. Right. And I walk up smiling to this kid and he's complimenting me. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, on the inside, you feel like, oh my gosh, I just don't really want to be on today. Right. But just hearing him right then, it, it triggers in you. And that's what I'm talking to y'all about purpose. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is to help people when you're an insurance agent. And when you get out on that island, it's a lonely business, especially for those of you that are watching that are face to face or you're sitting in your home office and it's just you against the world and you've had six calls and you had six no's. That's what's great about the bundle sale. You're always able to sell something. You may not be able to sell that client a Medicare supplement right then. He may be in lock-in. 
Yeah. You know, he may tell you that he loves his agent, that he's been with his agent for 30 years and he's not leaving. And then all of a sudden you find out you're entering an application for him on the Aetna portal and you get off. And what most of us do is we were pounding our chest. Woohoo, I'm the king. I'm the queen. I did this, man. That's all me. And what you should have really been doing when you got off that call and, and I'm not perfect at it, but I'm getting better at it. You know, by the time I die, I probably have it down flat, but you know, I immediately thank God for my wins. And now what I'm trying to do, I went to bed last night with something really heavy on my heart. And I woke up this morning saying, I want to start thanking God for the losses as well. I want to thank him for the battles because I think it's really hard to give him what he deserves when you're pounding your chest with, on the wins and you're just getting to him on the losses. It's kind of like your husband or your wife. Mm -hmm. When you only come home and tell them the good about your day and they may have had a bad day, the kids were screaming, they didn't get a minute to themselves. They think your life's perfect all day long. They don't realize that you struggled too. And I think as agents and type A people, we're supposed to be better communicators than we are. And I think we really, we, we need to get better at communicating with those that lift us up and help us be the success we are. You know, I had a lot of people at the 8% party Friday night at uh, House of Blue say, man, your husband stays in the back and he just watches you go party. And, you know, he's supportive of you. And he just, he lets you have that moment. And what I say all the time is I wouldn't be who I am without him. Mm. And we struggle, y'all, we still, I mean, we've been married 36 years. Wait, let's see, yeah. 2021. Yeah. 35, 36 years. That's it. 36 years. And, you know, I think what happens is, is you, you no, know, I've been in the business 36, married 35. Let's get the right, the math right. Married in 86, job 85. Everything happened in my life within a year. It was great. But, you know, you have to, you have to stop a moment right. and you have to say thank you to that spouse. And, and I'm not good at it. Yeah. I, I, I pray to be better every day. But we get so busy. You know, we talked about this not too long ago, right? We get so busy that we forget to be thankful. So I'm really focusing on being thankful. No, I, I think that's really good. I want to go back. And as I told you, I don't really follow a script, but I do want to hone in on this because I'm actually in a season. And thank you for being so real and vulnerable. I wish more people would just be real and authentic. Uh, mm -hmm. I truly believe you'll never really love yourself until you're really being the real you. Yep. And um, so this is the real you. And, I, and I'm so thankful for that. But I'm actually in a season where I'm going through some therapy and some counseling one on one, but then also with my wife. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel like so many people view that as a negative, especially when you are a type A or high D personality. Right. And it's interesting uh, to hear your story and encouraging how it's helped you you know, to have that objective voice that you can pour into and just get it all out. Um, and obviously your faith is very important to you, but real, real quickly, how is that con your faith contribute to your overall success? Do you mind just sharing that real quickly? I wouldn't have success without the faith. Mm, and, um, you know, 1992, um, that's when my life changed. Mm. Uh, my dad died January 19th, 1990. And um, y'all, when I say I was mad at God, I was mad at God. Uh, I've, you know, I've been a Christian since I was 10 years old, in and out of faith, like a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got brought to my knees, um, Dan and I were in dire straits. Mm -hmm. um, it was bad. Our marriage was not good. Our uh, financial situation was horrible. Um, I was worried about how we were going to make our house payment. And I had gotten a Subway uh, sandwich and was sitting at this uh, picnic table. And I know exactly where it was in the park where it happened. And um, when I, I drive by that all the time to go get my lashes done or, you know, to go to Casa Manana. And it always reminds me. But what happened was, is I literally, it, I, there was nobody there with me except Jesus. Mm. And I literally was just like, God, I'm going to tell you something right here, right today. If you will turn this around for me, I will never turn my back on you mm. ever. And um, went back to work and I was, 
I was okay, but I'd been crying all day. My eyes were puffy and I literally got back to the office and we were getting ready to start this annuity deal. And there was this package on my desk from a company at the time called American uh, Life and Casualty. Sure. And it had one annuity app in it. And this man walks in our office and we had just ran an ad the day before starting this annuity thing. And um, like I said, I didn't even hardly know what an annuity was. I was studying up and um, and I'd not been feeling well that day. Another thing that went down <clears throat> and um, my voice is still sore y'all from 8% Nation, so hang tight. But um, I literally, this man walks in and I'll never ever forget his name. It was, his last name was Zimmer. And he said, um, hi, I saw your ad in the paper and uh, I'm getting ready to go out of the country, but you know, I wanna leave something for my children in case something happens to me while I'm gone. And I'm like, okay. And he said, I wanna do a $100,000 annuity. And I said, okay. And you know, Galen turns on the sales. You know, I know everything about annuities at that point, you know, and we're getting there and he said, uh, and I wanna do four of them. And I'm like, in my mind, I only have one app but I have a copy machine. Mm -hmm. And so I gave Daisy that app and she still works with me to this day. And she copied that app and we did four $25,000 annuities because he had four children. And I had known enough about it being payable on death because he was asking questions about, does this have to go through probate, sure. blah, blah, blah. Him and his wife had just gotten divorced and he wanted to make sure that her address was on there and that she knew what was going on. And at the time, uh, the commission to me on that annuity was 7%. The debt Dan and I had at the time, which doesn't sound like a lot of debt to people nowadays, but when you don't have a job and you don't have any money coming in, except your weekly paycheck. And at the time Dan was working a job at Loomis uh, that he hated. Um, and, you know, and I wasn't real happy in what I was doing either. I mean, there was just a lot of unhappiness. The only thing that was happy for me at that point was my son who all of y'all have met now. And I had to be that joy for him when I got home. Mm. But we had $7,437 of debt mm. and I made $7,000 in commission. Mm. And uh, God turned it around wow. and in a big way. And once I sold that one and I never saw that man again, y'all, uh, never talked to him again. I know in my heart to this day that that man was sent to me, that that man was an angel. Wow. God said, here you go. You asked. And what does the Bible say? Yeah. Expect. Right. Expect big things. Yeah. Ask me for them. It may not happen the next day. It may not happen as fast as it did. But what y'all got to remember is that was a long journey. You know, that was almost a 24 month journey. Mm. And um, it was crazy after that. Um, I, my friend had started a ministry um, at church and we called it the trailer park ministry. And we would go pick up all these kids whose parents weren't good for them. They were good people, but they struggled with drug addictions. They struggled with alcoholism. They struggled with just being poor. And so Pam goes, I want you to help me in this ministry. I want you to come teach Sunday school because she was a brand new Christian. And uh, she knew I knew the Bible and she knew I loved to teach and she knew I had this infectious personality and she just kept working on me. And so uh, Sean was like, uh, in 1992, he was uh, six years old and uh, we got him started in church. And, you know, it was the best blessing of my life. And, and my whole life turned back to Christ and it's never... It's never been away from Christ. Mm -hmm. And the reason I tell people that, and I tell people my story of depression and, you know, I had something heavy on my heart yesterday. You know, I, I, I get a lot of these interview requests and some nights I've had a moment of crying with the Lord and, you know, I got to get up and y'all, I got to put the ice packs on and get the, you know, the puffiness away. But I could have very easily let the enemy win and call Rob this morning and say, dude, I'm just not there today. I need to do it another day when I'm feeling it. But the truth of the matter is I don't want the enemy to win. And that's always on my heart that if, if I back out of something that 
I don't know who's going to watch this, who, who might be struggling, who yeah. might be mad at God, who yeah. might be going through therapy. And, you know, I will tell you what, Rob, I think it's awesome that you're that spiritual leader and that you and your wife are there because so many couples struggle with having the man as a spiritual leader these days. And, you know, I can go on all day about that. And I've had some people get really mad at me when I say this, but Dan's always had 51 in our marriage and I've had 49 because of my faith. You know, everybody's a little different and I don't expect everybody to come around the way I do, but in every partnership, you have to have a leader. And he's used that 51%, you know, a couple of times, both times I was mad at him and I didn't like him for a week. And, you know, but both times he made the right call. And uh, one time y'all was so stupid. It was over a car. I wanted this convertible. Sean and I got back from Hawaii and we wanted this car, but it was a four cylinder. And Dan was like, you're not driving a four cylinder on these highways in Dallas, Fort Worth and get killed. You're not doing it. And so we didn't get it, but I ended up getting a better car. So God, God used that. But, you know, I'll just, I'll just encourage all of you today is, you know, if you're struggling with something, open the Bible. It's still the best self-help book out there. I know a lot of y'all hear me talk about Zig. You hear me talk about, you know, uh, Norman Vincent Pill. And, but I keep my desk full of those kind of books because I struggle You know, when you're out there doing these things, y'all, me and Rob talking about Jesus, the enemy will, right when we get off of this, he will try to push me back to his side. He will try to take Rob to his side and he'll start putting darkness in our hearts instead of the light that Jesus wants us to have. And, you know, I, I speak that everywhere. I don't just speak it with Medicare ministers. I don't just speak it with Rob, my friend, the pastor. I, I speak it with everyone. Sure. And um, because that's what God wants us to do. And we're, we're living in a very dark world right now. But if you can just shine his light a little bit, people will find their way out of the caves. And I, I, when I'm leading people, you know, and they're having a bad day or they're brand new in the business and they've gone three weeks and they haven't scratched paper. Mm-hmm. I always remind them of that coal miner story where all those coal miners were saved and it was by a flicker of a light. Mm-hmm. They just had a small light, but they kept finding their way. And you've got to remember it just a flicker. You don't have to go out and preach the gospel. You don't have to go out and read your Bible every single day, which I would encourage, by the way. But just a flicker in you will will cause the fire. And the fire is what creates your purpose. A lot of people think the fire is what creates your passion. Mm -hmm. Passion's temporary. Purpose is permanent. Mm -hmm. And y'all have got to remember your purpose is permanent. Sure. You may have a bad day. That's yeah. just because your passion ran out. Sure. You, you got to get something to get fired back up. Mm-hmm. But your purpose is for the long haul. Right. And like a lot of you out there right now that watch these, because I watch the comments that come in on these, because I watch these. These to me are fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And what I will tell you is have a pad in front of you when you're watching these. Good. And somebody will, what's great is these are out there for y'all to go watch over and over and over, mm-hmm. but write down one thing that you're going to take from that, because that'll keep your passion going. Your passion will fuel your purpose. Yep. The purpose is your vehicle. Okay. You can go out in your garage and the vehicle is there. It's not going to go away unless you had somebody steal it and they only steal it temporarily. So somebody could steal your purpose for a moment, but it's a moment. Yeah. They can't steal your purpose for a lifetime. That's right. So, you know, this piece begins with a smile. And I tell my team, we do motivational minutes, y'all. I have this book on my desk and I I look at it. And when I'm struggling, I open it up, Mm. you know, and I read it. I keep this card from my good friend that was at um, 8% Nation. And it's... uh, Marcy Ditto, who has mustard seed jewelry. That girl, y'all follow her. She's on fire for the Lord. She'll tell you her story. Her story is a lot like mine. Uh, I I believe God brought us together to keep each other uh, 
purposed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so God's planted somebody in your life. You're a leader to somebody. Everybody thinks you've got to have it on a business card. Nah, I don't even need a business card. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a leader because I'm a leader. Sure. You're a leader because you're a leader. You're leading somebody. A shepherd only has to have one sheep, right? one lamb, you know, to be a leader. Yes. So be excited about where you are in your life too. You know, um, it, you know, you get to 57, 58 and you're like, well, my kid's older. He's got his family. You know, I'm not really responsible for that. Well, you know, my husband and I've been married 35 years. Wonder if he's getting tired of me already, right. you know, uh, and, and all of those are just the enemy. You know, you have to literally say, get out of my head. My niece, who's a brand new Christian as well, she says, I love to stand in my kitchen when the kids have gone to school and Johnny's gone to work and I scream, Satan, get out of this house. <laughs> and then she goes, I go on about my day. Right. Yeah. And so she taught me that. And, you know, I've been a Christian a lot longer than her, but she taught me. So you're always taught by somebody every day and it fuels that purpose. Sure. No, I, man, you brought some serious fire today and that's, Awesome. Uh, one thing I want to bring up, and then I want to close by asking one question here. But I love that you asked. I think so many people think that God is not a good father. And the Bible says that he loves to give good gifts to his children. And I think a lot of times we don't get those good gifts because we don't ask. We, we right. don't. We just don't put it out there. And he says, if we ask, we'll receive. Yeah. And so you asked and God responded. But if you don't mind, and you don't have to necessarily give us exact numbers, but fast forward to, and I know the integrity thing and all of that, mm -hmm. but what kind of production was your agency doing? Because I want people to see that it started with a simple ask and then fast forward through hard work and knowing your purpose and living on purpose. Can you give us some kind of just some numbers that, that your, your company was doing? We had our record year uh, in uh, 2020. We wrote over 120 million. Wow. And, you know, there's not companies, y'all. I've, I've dealt with insurance companies for a long time that don't, they don't write 120 million. Yeah. Um, and I was quoting 80 million because that was the number one of the girls gave us in the office for some sure. report we were doing. And I was announcing uh, to somebody what we did. And I'm pretty sure Taylor told me, you're quoting the wrong number. We did 120. And I was like, wow. oh, okay. And he'll probably come back and go, Galen, it was a hundred, but it was 120. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the funny thing is it started with that annuity client. It started with Lisa and I running uh, leads to show ourselves we could do it. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing that, you know, Rob, I love what you're doing with this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, we don't have enough of this. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to launch Accomplished this year, but when the integrity thing came along, sure. I literally um, was, I want to push that back because I think God's asking me to put that aside for right now because he's, I kept hearing this and I don't know if this happens to you, Rob, but it, I, I, I know God's talking to me, but I kept hearing there's going to be a better story to tell. Mm. Hold up. You don't, you don't need to tell that one yet. Yeah, good. And I kept hearing that and it didn't make sense to me. I was like, what that I want to tell it now. Why? You know, and it just, it was, it wasn't time. Mm. Um, it, it, time is coming. I can feel it in my heart, yeah. but Rob, I want to, I want to stop just for a second sure. and say something to you. You are a light to so many with these podcasts. Mm. I can't imagine the stories you're not being told. Right. The wins you're not hearing. Sure. You know, the the stuff that's crazy awesome that you're creating. Mm. And praise God, you're in counseling because what's happening is is you and your wife are both getting fed so that you can feed others. Right. And that's also what we're commanded to do. Right. You know, this is pay it forward. You know, right. I get asked all the time, you know, Galen, well, why do you, why are you doing this for me? Why are you doing that for me? And the answer is simple. I want to, but the real answer is God wants me to. Okay. And I think if you're watching this today and you, you are struggling in your career, this is not easy. 
you know, what I teach my team and I do it myself. Like last night, I came in here and I said, Lord, I need some words of wisdom. Sure. I have this book and I would encourage all of you to get it. I'm going to send it to Rob, yeah. but it's a hundred pass along notes to be still and no, I'm not good at being still. <laughs> and I was challenged right. by my counselor to be still. Right. And you get in the moment. But what I do is I just open mm -hmm. and I read it because I think that's what's meant for me. And like I open this one and it says, pause and notice his presence in your life. Mm -hmm. I am praying for you as you go about your day. Remember, his timeline is perfect mm. and he never fails those who seek him. Yeah. And it always gives a Bible verse and it gives a quote. And the Bible verse is, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. Yep. And y'all, that's good stuff right there. Yeah. Wait for him um, to the soul who seeks him. And that's in Lamentations. And then they quote, a person at the bottom. So you're getting the good book and then you're getting somebody else's book. Yep. And it says the first act of love is always the giving of attention. Yeah. And I just think that's huge. And sometimes we seek attention from a person. We need to realize that that attention is being given to you sometimes just by Jesus. And I know that sounds really tacky, just by Jesus, sure. but he doesn't mind that. Yeah. As long as his name is spoken, that's all he cares about. Yep. And so I would encourage you all today to go back and watch all of Rob's podcasts because you're going to get something from everyone. Right. But I'm always here for those who need a prayer. I'm a big prayer warrior. Yep. And y'all, y'all don't have to do a 30 minute prayer when somebody asks you for prayer. All you have to say is, Jesus, I'm lifting them up in prayer to you. You know the will, you know their need. I want your will to be there. Yeah. And, you know, that's all I say most of the time when people ask me for yeah. a prayer request, yeah. lifting their name up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you ever start a church, I'll, I'll come and join it. Um, Cause you've, I tell people, I don't think so many people have a problem with God. I think they have a problem with the way a lot of people package God and they Amen. use God to that control one. and to hurt and to manipulate in the reality. Fear. Yeah, fear. And the reality is he really created you, a unique you. Out of 7 billion people on the planet, he created you, your story, your unique gift set. And you've dropped so much wisdom and gold today. But one thing I always like to ask everybody, and I'll close with this one when they come on, is if there was one uh, word that you would use to describe yourself, what would that one word be? Hmm. Purposed. Purposed. And so second part of that is you've shared that, but in a nutshell, how is being purposed help you overcome? It, 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 like, w w how did it get you through some of those bad times? Well, I've always wanted the best for those that surround me. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, I, I want to make everybody's life easier. Sure. You know, I think that that's my purpose. And sometimes that's just giving a word of encouragement. Sometimes yep. that's just saying nothing. Sometimes that's just listening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that purpose is such a passion right now for me to help others find their purpose right. that I, I think that's what helps me overcome. You know, you can forget about your troubles yep. when you're helping someone else with theirs. Amen. And sometimes that's hurtful. And I, I've gone through roads of hurt because I've worried more about others sometimes than I've worried about my own self. So take time for yourself. Take an hour of a day and just make it all about you. It can be in the Wendy's parking lot. It can be at the QT store. It can be wherever you are. Take that moment, make yourself a priority and just have a book in the car, have a Bible in the car, pop it open and know that those words are meant for you and try to take those words and build that in your day. And, and that's what's going to get you through it. Uh, Y'all, there's another thing to remember. Let's go back to sales 101 for a minute. A zero day is not a zero week. Mm, that's good. A zero week's not a zero month. And if you had a zero month, it's not a zero year. You have so many other opportunities to put a number in front of that zero. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we have a zero day, we think we're a zero. Nothing could be further from the truth. From that zero day, you just paid for a boatload of education. 
take that education and use it on the next person. Yeah. That's what will put a number in front of your zero day. Wow. Well, friends, we have been pastored today by Miss Galen and just dropping tons of wisdom. And I love what you said there at the end as we close is I have found in my own life that when I need to be the most served, I go and serve. And it's interesting how when you're just helpful and you serve others, and it's not to discount what we're going through, but it just makes those problems smaller. And right. I get fresh wind in my sails. That's the word I use all the time. The phrase I use, mm -hmm. I get fresh wind in my sails when I, when I'm helping others and I'm encouraging others. And so I'm so thankful for you. I pray Thank many you. more years of friendship between you and me and, and my wife and I love you dearly. Oh, and I love so her. encouraged by, by you. And so friends, as we close today, I want to remind you like, comment, subscribe. You need to watch this one over like five times and take tons of notes because there are coaches that charge thousands of dollars for what Galen has dropped today. And I pray that, that you will prepare your heart because I believe that the seeds that she has uh, casted out today that are awesome, but they only if they fall on good ground. So it's up to us to make sure they fall on good ground. So make it an awesome day. God bless you guys. And we will talk to you soon.